Solar Orbiter is an international collaboration, and this is also one of the key features of uh, most of the missions we do in, in Europe, and in this case also with NASA. Not only two big agencies are working together, but also instruments built in various countries within Europe and here in the States. And this is uh, one of the, uh, let's say, unique feature of this mission is that uh, we have been able to put all these 10 instruments to work together and actually, they also work together in orbit because they are able to talk to each other so that when one of the instruments detects an interesting feature, it can then send a flag, a trigger to the other instruments to co-observe that same feature uh, in the various uh, uh, sensitivities of the instruments. Uh, if we move to the next, um, okay. So I mentioned that we have instruments. We have 10 instruments on the mission. Uh, we divide those instruments in two major categories. One category is uh, what we call in situ instruments, and they measure the sun at the location of the, of the spacecraft itself. They measure the magnetic field at the location of the spacecraft or the particles that come from the sun. We also have instruments which we call remote science or remote sensing instruments, and they will be taking, like you guys are doing now, they take images from the sun. They take images in the visible range, also the ultraviolet range, uh, up to the X-ray. They also take images not only from the, uh, let's say, the sun itself. They block the sun. They take images of the corona uh, of the sun. They take images of the light scattered in the solar wind uh, looking sideways, sideways from the spacecraft. So it is a, a wide range of instruments uh, all together taking uh, very you know, uh, unique uh, measurements and, and images from the sun. If we move to the, uh, there is another, uh, if we move to the next view, um, presentation or view representation. Okay, how do we get there? How can we actually do it? Uh, we launched from here with an Atlas V, and that puts us in a solar uh, orbit. And what we do is we reduce the distance to the sun uh, in what we call the perihelion, which is the minimum distance to the sun. So uh, after a, a few years, we reduce that distance to about the distance between the sun and Mercury. And that will allow us to take unprecedented images of the sun. At the same time, we will use Venus to do slingshots, manu uh, slingshot maneuvers around it to change the orbital plane so that the mission will be able to look at, this, at the poles of the sun. And this will be the first time ever that we will be able to look at the solar poles. So here you'll see uh, the heat shield, the big rectangular um, uh, thing at the front of the spacecraft. Behind the, spacecraft uh, behind the heat shield, the rest of the spacecraft is hiding. And we have to keep that heat shield pointing at the sun for the entire duration, unless we're doing maneuvers. Um, and the reason is, as I said, we don't uh, able to easily tolerate any heat on the sides of the spacecraft. So that heat shield gets up to about 600 degrees centigrade, so that's more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so very, very hot. Uh, not as hot as Parker Probe, that's going much closer. But we do something extra that Parker Solar Probe doesn't do, and that's open uh, apertures, doors, uh, in the front of the heat shield that allows us to take pictures of the sun. So this Parker couldn't do because it's uh, really too hot. Um, but we can just about uh, manage to operate instruments in this intense, uh, intensely heated environment. Um, now the instruments themselves have to then get rid of all that heat very quickly. Um, and we do this with a special technology uh, which we call the SOAR, the Standoff Radiator Assembly, uh, that basically takes the heat as fast as possible, conducts it uh, very efficiently through the side of the spacecraft. Um, if, we, if we maybe jump back to that slide again. It's also classically got solar arrays. Um, you don't have a problem with power um, when you're that close to the sun. What you have is a temperature problem. So in order to make sure that the solar arrays are not suffering from the extreme temperatures that the heat shield gets to, uh, because they couldn't tolerate those temperatures, we also have to tilt the solar arrays away from the sun. So they fly almost edge on when we're very close to the sun. So uh, an angle of 78 degrees away from the sun line. Uh, which is you know, quite an extreme angle. To Normally, you've put, got solar rays normal to the sunlight, and we don't. Um, you can also see two, uh, three rather long antennas sticking out to the side. Those are the RPW, the radio plasma wave analyzer antennas. They're looking for radio signals in the plasma. And you can just about make out an instrument boom. Comes out better in the video, which I'll show in a minute. It's uh, just over four meters long. 
and that contains as well some of the sensitive instruments that want to be as far away from the spacecraft as possible. So we put them on a long boom out the back of the spacecraft. And Solar Orbiter will be the first time that we send a satellite out to take images of the sun's poles and in addition getting the first ever data of the polar magnetic field and we believe that this really holds the keys to unraveling the mysteries of the sun's activity cycle. And uh, in addition, we will also monitor the far side of the sun, which we cannot see from Earth, and combine that with data from satellites and ground-based telescopes to, to pr provide a full 3D view of our star. And so the orbiter is really a, a laboratory in orbit. We have a suite of 10 sophisticated instruments that will, will work together to track the evolution of eruptions on the sun from the surface out into space all the way down to Earth.